So today I'm going to show you how to use the database Academic Search Premier. This is a great database for you to use. It has something on every topic, but it contains a lot of information. It has full text access to over 4,700 journals and magazines. Let's get started. First, I'll show you how to get to Academic Search Premier. To do this, you'll type in www.eastms.edu. This is the school's website. And you can get to the library's website here on the right side of the page by clicking library. So we're looking for the database Academic Search Premier. The easiest way to find a database when you know the title of it is to look at our alphabetical list of databases. So I'm going to choose databases from the top left corner of the page. And here is an um, alphabetical list of all of our databases. So I'm going to click this button. Since Academic Search Premier starts with an A, it's the first one listed, and I'm going to click it here. Before we search, let's look at some of the features of this database. First, you see the title of the database here. It's very important that you know this. Um, if you need to find an article again, you're going to want to know what database it came from. And a lot of our databases look almost identical, so it's important for you to remember what database you're searching in. There are also some boxes down here that we might want to check. The first is this full text box. Um, I use that every time I search the database. The reason um, for that is not everything that is in the database we have access to. Um, so if we select full text, this will only bring back results that we have complete full access to immediately. The other thing you might want to check is this scholarly or peer-reviewed journals box. Um, you'll check this if your instructor has told you specifically that you need scholarly articles or peer-reviewed articles. The boxes here at the top of the page are where we put in the search terms that we're using. You'll see here where it says select a field. This just means you're doing a keyword search. If you um, click the drop down, you'll see other options. So you can search by subject terms or title if you're looking for a specific article or an, a specific author. I typically leave it as a keyword search though. You'll also see this, these boxes that say and. This allows for what's called Boolean searching. Um, if you were to put in something here like children and games, um, this will bring back articles that are about children and gangs. So it won't bring back articles that are about children in education or adults in gangs, which you might have gotten if you had only searched children or only searched gangs. But by linking these two terms and saying, I want articles that are about children and gangs, then you get a very specific set of results that are more likely to be relevant to your um, research. You can also change this box to OR. So you could type in children or kids and gangs. So what this will do is bring back articles that are about gangs and children or kids. Um, so when we just did a search for children and gangs, we would have gotten results that are about gangs and children. But by adding the kids in there, since it's another word for children, we might get a few more results that we would have missed the first time. We can also change this to not. And this allows us to get rid of certain articles that we know we don't want. So you can type in Mustang, and that might bring back um, things related to the vehicle, or it might bring back things related to the animal. But by putting not in here, and writing something like horse, this will not bring back results related to the horse and only bring back results related to the vehicle. After we type in our search terms and hit search, we'll see our results. On the left side of the page, um, we have the options to narrow these results even further. If we forgot to mark full text on the um, previous page or we needed to mark scholarly journals and forgot, we can do that here. Um, you can also limit your results by certain types. So let's look at the different features of our results list. 
If we hover over this magnifying glass, we can see the abstract. You can also see here what format the article is in, but we'll discuss that in a minute. Here we see the various um, pieces of information provided to us about the article. And a lot of this is used when you're crafting your citations, so make sure you write down the important parts. Um, things you might want to pay attention to are the authors, the source, and the abstract. Now let's look at the difference in an HTML file and a PDF file. Here below we see the HTML file. The information it gives us is fine, but it's not quite as good as the PDF. Um, notice that there are no page numbers. Um, additionally, you see pictures, but they're not always in the correct place in the article, so you don't always have the context that you might need when you're reading the HTML file. If we select PDF, you'll notice that the article is much more like a scan. So you see page numbers here, which you'll need for your citations, and then the pictures. It, it kind of makes a difference when you're reading. So feel free to use the HTML if you find a great article and it's only available in HTML, but if PDF is an option, that's the one you want to choose. So once you find an article you like, you'll want to save it, and there are several different ways to do that. If you hover at the bottom right corner of the page, um, you'll see a few different options appear. Um, if you click this floppy disk option, that allows you to save the article to your computer or to a jump drive. If you click the printer icon, that will allow you to print the article. You want to make sure that you choose this button because you'll see this printer button up here as well. This only prints the citation for the article. It's a little bit confusing, so you'll want to pay attention to that. If you select this button, you can email the article to yourself. By selecting this button, you can see the citation in various formats. So if you click it, it appears here at the top, and you scroll down in your list until you find the one that you want, and then copy and paste it into your Works Cited page. You do want to make sure that this citation follows any special guidelines given to you by your instructor. And it's always your responsibility to check the citations to make sure that they um, are up to date and follow the most recent rules. So you want to be careful about that and if you need help checking it, you can talk to your instructor or you can talk to a librarian. If you select the folder, you can save multiple articles in one place. So if you're doing some research and you um, find multiple articles you like, you can put them all in a folder um, to look at at the end. You do want to be careful though, if you leave the database, you'll lose those articles unless you create an account. It's free to do, you just need your email address. Um, so that's a great thing to do if you um, need to come back to these articles later. So this is a quick overview of how to use the database Academic Search Premier. If you need further help using it or have any questions, just contact a member of your campus library staff.